The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, the author of Mastering Probability, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, all you wonderful money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the January 30th, terrific Thursday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and I absolutely treasure your presence here today. My outcome, as always, is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need in order to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that's what it's all about. So let's go look at one of our tools. This is the tool I call Become an Ant. You've heard it before. And today it's apropos, I believe, because we're going to see if the bulls have the power to become an ant. Ants, they live by a four-part belief system, a, a success philosophy that I consider every single one of us, every single one of us should really live by. Belief number one, ants, they never quit. If an ant's headed somewhere, and you know you've done this, you've tried this before at some age in your life, if an ant is headed somewhere and you try to stop it, it'll find another way. The ants will climb over, they'll climb under, they'll climb around. They keep looking for another way. Folks, never quit looking for another way to get to where it is you are supposed to go. Belief number two, ants, they think winter all summer long. Now, that's really important perspective because summer well, summer doesn't last forever, and therefore, ants gather their winter food in the middle of summer. Belief number three, ants think summer all winter long. Boy, most of us across the United States, this is a belief system that we need right here, right now. Ants think summer all winter long. It's even more important because during winter, you know, when markets are moving lower, that you could call a winter season, right? The ants remind themselves that winter won't last long and they'll soon be out. They'll soon move out on that first warm day. The ants are out, and if it turns cold again, they dive back down into the earth. You know, they get on there, they put on their uh, sleeping bags or what have you, and as soon as it warms up, they're back out and at it again. So we're going to see what the uh, bulls think of uh, winter and summer. And belief number four, how much will an ant gather during the summer to prepare for winter? All they possibly can. Friends? This is the way to live. Never give up. Always look ahead. Focus on what you want. Stay positive. And most importantly, do all you can do. Let's go see what these markets are doing out here. Right now, Dow Futures up 91 points. They're trading at 15,789. S&P Futures up 11.5. They're trading at 17.83. NASDAQ Futures up 29 points, trading at 35.01. Russell 2000 up 8 points, trading at 11.28. King Dollar on the move. It's up Almost uh, 50 cents, 46 cents, trade down at 8104. A lot of movement in the uh, Japanese yen, a uh, bunch of movement in the uh, British pound, a bunch of movement in the uh, euro. So we'll take a look at the currency markets, even the hard currency market. We're going to look at Goldilocks down 22 bucks right now, out at 1240. Not a good scene right there. We'll see how the day ends up here. Silver. Ah, I believe silver, high-ho silver, breaking the uh, consolidation zone this morning. We'll go check in on that. It's off 2.5%, down 47 cents, trading out at 19.08. Natural gas back, uh, boy, natural gas back big here this morning, off 4%, down 23 cents out there. Our call in number is 877-927-6648. A ton to talk about. you got things moving in the market up and down all around. But if you give me a call, I'll be happy to take a look at uh, your stock chart. So where do we begin <laughs> Excuse me. Let's actually go begin by taking a look at, uh, man, so many places. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ futures here. Let's take a look at the NQ. Now, this is a 30-minute chart that we're looking at. Really great downtrend channel that price has been traveling within. And this is off of its highs out here. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, thanks so much for doing that. If you're listening on your mobile device at tfn.mob, don't forget if it's a smartphone, you can go to the home page of tfn.com. Upper right-hand side, you'll see a button, three smartphone type devices on it. Click on that. The show will stream live. You'll see my uh, charts out here. And, of course, you can catch the archive on Channel 9, what we're looking at here is the NASDAQ futures have now busted through the descending price channel. They did that here as we were coming into the 9 o'clock hour. Uh, you know, there's some conviction.
conviction behind the move 7,000 contracts. So they're going to, what the NASDAQ futures are going to do right now is they're going to trade up to the 20, I'm sorry, the 25, what am I talking about? They're going to trade up to the 35, 29-ish level out here. Let's go take a look at the uh, pattern that could be forming. Let's take a look at the potential bearish pattern that could be forming out here because that's important for us to take a look at. So at 35.13, you're above 3,500, just slightly above 3,500 right now. 35.13 35.13 becomes your .786 retracement. I suppose we're going to take a look at an A to B equals CD pattern that would set up there. So this is going to be an important area for us to watch, that .786 retracement. Let's go ahead and draw this in live here on the show right there. Uh, what do you got? Um, I didn't even draw it very well, did I? At least if I'm going to draw, I should be able to especially with these tools here, draw a pattern that looks pretty good for you. So right now you can see you're up above the .618 level, that says, which is 3,500. You should be able to get to 3,512. Uh, you're at 3,502 right now. I say by breaking this uh, trend line, by breaking this trend line out here, uh, what what we really ought to see is a move up to about 3,529. You can see on the 30-minute chart you're starting to get into that uh, over uh, overbought uh, condition, so that 3513 ish 3529 is the uh, target for the uh, NQ, but it has broken through, which it has not done, off of the uh, highs back here since January 23rd. It has not broken that. Now, if this area doesn't hold here, that'll give us some uh, real strong uh, indications as to what the market is going to uh, do out here. That is on the uh, NASDAQ. If we take a look at the ES Mini out here, ES Mini has a similar pattern. You know, we took a look at this descending price channel yesterday. It's going to try to uh, punch its head, at least get up to the top of it, which is right around the 1786 level. That's at the point where I'll have to decide what I want to do with my long position inside of the ES Mini right now. I am thinking ES Mini is going to try to break through this level and get up to about 1792. Right now it's trading at 1783, but we do have have to recognize it's going to run into this descending price channel. The question is, will the uh, NASDAQ be able to just simply pull all of these boats higher out here? So we're paying attention to uh, both of those. If we take a look at the uh, Dow futures as well, Dow futures are going to have a similar pattern to what we took a look at inside of the ES Mini on a 30-minute chart out here. So as we take a look at this, they're going to be running into resistance here. You know, they're already above or they're trading right at their 100% move of a move. That's a swing point here from 12 noon yesterday at about the level of 15,793 or at 15,794 right now. If I take a look at <clears throat> the retracement off of the swing from 3.30 a.m., on January 29th, all the way down to the low put in here at 2.30 in the afternoon yesterday. That was at 15.643. 15.847 is its point six one eight retracement uh, level. So that is probably the area where it's going to hit. But all of these, we got some nice, uh, and the Dow here, you know, has obviously been in the uh deepest, uh, well, the Dow and the S&P really both have been in a similar price channel line. So it's going to be important for us. We'll do this through the next uh, hour and uh, 45 minutes. We'll continue to pay attention to these channel lines to see what happens as the uh, Dow and the ES Mini get to those channel lines. Why do you want to do that? Well, you know, because now it's all about the ants, and we're going to see whether the uh, bullish ants are thinking summer now all winter long. What does that mean? That means we could be seeing a short-term change in trend. So for those of you that are short the market, you're going to really have to consider what is it that you do. Now, look, if you're short the S&P 500 right now until it breaks this uh, downtrend uh, uh, channel line, you might be okay. I'd have to say you are okay until it uh, breaks through that line. Same thing here in the uh, Dow futures. But once it breaks it, and if it comes back and tests it and rejects it, says that there's going to be some other type of move to the upside, we can take a look at different parameters as to what that will be. That's what's going on right now inside the 30-minute charts here for the uh, futures contracts. Let's go take a look at uh, Goldilocks and uh, Silver. Let's go see what's going on over in uh, that land out here. That happens to be the uh, Euro-Japanese yen. We can come back to uh, that chart here in a, a moment. Let's take a look at uh, Silver. So it has not broken the consolidation area. It's just traded down to the bottom of this consolidation, which is right in this range here of about 1904. Look, the last swing point low out here that had a uh, uh, had an intraday move, and really right now that's all that we have going on as we speak. That is the swing point from December 31st. Now, the low there, 1872. 
28,000 uh, contracts. Let's see, what do we have today? We're pushing into this swing point, though. We've done 27,000 contracts. That's not a good scene out there. So you're pushing into that swing point. You're doing it with volume. You're starting to break through the uh, consolidation. That says that silver needs to hold this 1872. Somebody out there, do the math <clears throat> for me, if you would. I'll see if I can do it. Ah, do it. It's 19 bucks basically is the bottom of the consolidation. So subtract two 250. You're talking about if it breaks this uh, swing point here at uh, 1872, 19 minus two, that's 17. So you're looking at about a 1650 price inside of uh, silver. What does 1650 do for us? 1650. Hmm. Well, that uh, takes you below, quite frankly, the June 28th uh, level out here. Uh, June twenty eighth swing point low is eighteen eighteen. So we this is a two look. This is a two point consolidation range. We're still in it, but it is uh, it is trying to break this to the uh, downside. I can tell you from a relative strength indicator standpoint, um, it's got no problem. It is not in an oversold uh, level. That's what the consolidation moves. When you start moving sideways from a consolidation standpoint, that's all what it what it's really doing out there. It's moving out out of any type of oversold or overbought. Uh, condition. So in this case here, it certainly has the uh, power and the energy to be able, and it's got the uh, volume here this morning to be able to run to the uh, downside. Now yesterday, let me switch over to a different chart for us. Yesterday, we took a look at a side-by-side -side chart for both silver and gold. Let's see if we've got those still up on my screen out here. Oh, we do. So inside of uh, silver, let's take a look at the 30-minute chart out here. And silver had been in this little descending price channel in addition to the consolidation. So as silver was moving up yesterday, you maybe remember if you caught the uh, show as we were coming up. You had a nice move inside of silver at 9 o'clock. That's where my uh, cursor is. But you can see the price was also getting into that extreme overbought uh, condition. We said it had to work its way off. It did do that. And it pulled all the way back down to the bottom of that little descending price channel. Of course, it broke through there at about 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, and uh, went back up, tested it. It has broken through that uh, level. So now we just simply switch back over to that, that daily chart, and that's going to give us our next message. And if it does not hold this consolidation level, it says, you know what, that June 28th low should be tested. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. Who says you can't take it with you? TFNN says you can. With your mobile device and TFNN's live radio streams, TFNN has put it all in the palm of your hands. No special apps to download. No subscription fees for live radio or Tiger TV streams. We say you can. Now let's go over to the dollar because the dollar is going to be the generator. It is the generator of basically higher dollar, lower market. And what the dollar has done, and this whole uptrend, folks, has just gone sideways. The way it works, folks, is this. We say you can. The Tiger Financial News Network. Smart investors and professional traders know you can. TFNN.com. Educating investors. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Terrell Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's trading newsletter. Patterns, profits, and peace of mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you the edge you've been looking for. Try Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind absolutely free for two full weeks. That's an $85 value. Yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. And get the edge you've been looking for. Investors, Taz Market Research delivers to its subscribers expert commentary on the analysis of 50 different markets each day. Get this invaluable and timely information through the daily market research videos Taz Market Research produces each day before 9 a.m. The video analysis will include reports on currencies, interest rates, indices, metals, energies, grains, and more. You'll be able to gauge where high profitability setups are in each of the markets. Receive a free two-week trial subscription to Taz Market Research videos on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow futures up 107 right now. S&P futures up 13 and a half. Trading out at 1784.75. Uh, let's uh, we were taking a look at the uh, silver before. Let's go take a look at uh, Goldilocks. See what uh, she is uh, doing uh, this morning. So many things moving. So now, in in the case of gold, what we uh, what we have, what we're looking at on our screen here, a number of different things. You see horizontal and diagonal lines. If we focus in on the uh, diagonal lines, that's the rising price channel. That gold has been traveling. Now, this is a 30-minute chart, so these charts are really just uh, charts uh, left over from yesterday that we were taking a look at. So this was really a side-by-side -side chart out here. Now, what we can see is that uh, gold has broken through this uh, rising uh, price channel. Did it here uh, this morning as we were coming down the air at uh, 9 o'clock, uh, moved down. Uh, during that trading session, about 3,000 contracts. Uh, just before that, about 2,500 contracts. Now, it has broken through that level. It's broken through its uh, primary trading range boundary line at 1242 out here. That says we could easily see gold now pull back to the 1225-ish level. What it is, what it has done on that 30-minute uh, basis, just like yesterday, the opposite of yesterday when we're taking a look at the silver, it's truly moved into the extreme oversold uh, condition out here. So the real key is going to be, can gold get back into that rising price channel? What's that price? Uh, probably about 1245. I'd have to say if gold closes below 1245 today, right now you're at 1240. Uh, so that 12, 1245 is kind of like a 1245-ish because that's I'm just trying to gauge where that rising price channel might be over the course of the next uh, you know several hours out here. But if in fact gold tries to get back into that rising price channel, which it has done uh, by the way, if it tries to get back in there and fails to uh, do so. Uh, that says that we're going to see some additional pressure inside of gold. At least that's what the 30-minute chart is uh, showing us. Let's go see if we can find the uh, daily chart, see what the daily chart here shows us inside of uh, Goldilocks. And what it's showing us right now is that uh, trend line out here. That trend line that we've been uh, following, that we've been paying attention to, is the trend line that really takes us back into the highs back in November of 2012. And you can see that has been a formidable, I do mean a formidable, area of resistance. And that's why it's so important because once you get above it, and this is what you want to see today here for from uh, Goldilocks, you want to see intraday now. Again, so we've taken a look at a 30-minute chart. It's in the extreme oversold condition. So we ought to see that condition begin to work its way off. Sometime soon, doesn't mean right there at 9.26 a.m., but start to work that condition off, and it's going to do it in two ways. It's either going to do it by moving sideways, or it's going to move it by bouncing higher. From a bullish standpoint, you want to see it bounce higher, and you want to get it over this uh, trend line. Where is that price level? Here it's probably not the 1245-ish area. It's more like about 12. 
1255 is where 1254 is 1253, somewhere in that area where gold would need to get to get above that uh, trend line. Now, look, a few bucks or so is not going to kill things one way or the other out here, but it is important. So what is Goldilocks uh, doing on a daily basis? Well, it's coming back to the area where it broke out, and this is going to be important. That is 123080. So earlier on the 30 minute chart, I suggested that, hey, a close blow 1245, that's not a, a good scene. Well, on the daily chart, it uh, says a close below 1230.80 is really not a, a good scene out there. That had 86,000 contracts on the uh, way up. Nice bullish uh, candle out there. Uh, and we've got uh, 26,000 so far on the way down. So you're coming back with light volume. Volume or not. Holding 1230.80 is uh, very important for Goldilocks. If it doesn't, we'll come back and take a look at the uh, patterns out there. But that's what's going on inside of the hard metals as we speak right now. Let's take a look at the uh, at crude oil here, a light sweet crude, uh, getting above a, a B point, doing it right now with some light volume. The uh, B point of a, a to B equals C to up is the uh, January 23rd. Swing point high, 97.84 is the number, 252,000 contracts on that session. You're up above it right now, 98.45. Uh, you've done it so far today with about 68,000 uh, contracts. If we take a look at this potential A to B equals CD up, it's a good one. It is absolutely a, a good one. Now, the only resistance that it has to uh, clear, and the good one, what I mean by that is it says 104, uh, 103, 60 to 104 would really be the area. Now, in order for that to occur, what Light Sweet Crude needs to do, it needs to clear this 100% move of a move level, the last swing point from December 27th out at the 100.75 area out here. But, uh, you know, that's it. So it's, it's up against its resistance. Here's where the battle is going on inside of Light Sweet Crude from the uh, high of December, uh, we'll call it December 27th, down to the uh, low of uh, January 9th. If we take a look at the retracement, let's go do that right now. If we take a look at that retracement, Give me a moment here to try to delete this. We'll see that we should be at or above the, uh, uh, we're trading right at the .786 area. 98.71, we're at 98.44, we've hit 98.59 here this morning. So when we get back from this next break, we'll go see how the market's going to open. Popping here in the uh, session, you've got Alexian Pharmaceuticals, Under Armour, Facebook and Twitter. That's to the upside, to the downside, ADT, Citrix. Uh, you've got uh, Diego PLC. We'll be right back, folks. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, is going up in price again at the end of this month. 
Andy's weekly newsletter has delivered multiple profitable trades for his subscribers, even including a triple-digit winner within recent months. Right now is a perfect time to get a full month-long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy will also be hosting a subscriber event on Thursday, January 30th, Seasonality in Energy and Agricultural Commodities, that you can gain access to by simply signing up for a free trial to Andy Heck's newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report. A 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, a free 60-minute live online webinar with Andy Hecht, which will be archived, and you lock in the low price of $49 a month should you decide to continue after your 30-day free trial. Offers don't get much better than this. Act now before January is over and this offer passes you by. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report today. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. We got the Dow up 77 points, trade out at 15, 8, 15. S&P up 15, trading at 17.89. Composite up 51 points, trading out at 41.02. Russell 2000 up 11, trading at 11.33. Apple up about 250, trading out at 5.03. Microsoft up five cents. Google up 39 dollars. Boy, that is before earnings out here. Google is off to the race. What do they do? They release numbers early out here. That's up pretty big, three and a half percent out here. I believe they're out with earnings after the bell. So it must be the sale of the uh, Motorola Mobility uh, unit to Lenovo. I don't know if that's what, uh, what is uh, moving it. I think they'd sold that for a loss out there. I, either way, that is up uh, large. That's up big. Cisco's up a nickel. Intel back six pennies right now. Alexian Pharmaceuticals is up big as well, up 18%, up 24 bucks and change. Under Armour also up big, about 14% uh, here. Under Armour out with uh, numbers, I believe, uh, before the uh, bell, revenues of six hundred eighty-two million versus five hundred five. Nice top line beat their net income, uh, sixty-four million versus fifty million last year. So a nice move there. You got Haynes Brands, HBI. It's a ticker symbol. They're up thirteen percent. Haynes Brands out with uh, numbers. Net revenues uh, one point two billion versus one point one five, and net income a uh, thirty-two million versus uh, ooh. Uh, versus 80 million uh, from the uh, previous quarter. Uh, regardless, they are up uh, nicely here. Facebook up as well, 14 and a half percent. Visa up uh, five uh, bucks, up uh, two and a half percent. Twitter up nine percent here right now. To the downside, New Star Inc. Oof, oof. NSR. I hope you're not in this equity here. This thing is down 20 percent off nine bucks right now. They uh, generated revenues. They beat their top line, 237 million versus 214. Uh, maybe below estimates or maybe guidance out there. They had a net income of 38 million versus 37, but boy, they are getting just a shellacked out here. Uh, ADT Corporation. They're down 17 percent nearly this morning, up over six dollars. They were out with uh, numbers. Generated net income of 165 million versus 186 out there. Revenues of 839 million versus 809. So beating top line, not the uh, bottom line out here, and getting just whacked. Same thing with Citrix Systems. CTXS is a ticker symbol. They were out with uh, numbers, I believe, after the bell last night. They're down 10 percent, off 580 out there. <clears throat> Let's go back and let's see. So we took a look at uh, Goldilocks. We took a look at silver. We took a look at light sweet crude. Let's go check in on uh, natural gas out here. Let's go see what's going on 
with uh, natural gas, and we'll take a quick peek at the uh, currency pairs and just try to make our rounds around the uh, market. We take a look at uh, net gas out here trading. Now, this is the chart from yesterday. So uh, the chart from yesterday, this is the H contract. It is the March contract that we are in. And what we showed here, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, we showed the .786 Gartley sell pattern. Now, this was a Gartley pattern that confirmed. And that's a difference. So, you know, just because you can draw or just because you can identify a .786 retracement, that doesn't mean that's where price stops. And when I, when I use the vernacular that uh, when a .786 Gartley pattern fails, it turns into a butterfly, what I mean is a .786 Gartley that actually confirms. In this case here, the only way that I get confirmation is where you have the bulls and bears send you signals. And they send you signals because they create signs. That's their job is to create signs in the marketplace for each of us. And then it's our job to interpret those signs and then go ahead and take action, if any action. In this case here, you had a .786 Gartley sell pattern. It was confirmed at this candle right here, 8 o'clock in the morning yesterday, some additional follow-through at 8.30, and that says this pattern should have worked out. That means that uh, we should have never seen price close above the high from uh, 6.30 a.m. out at $5.08. It did that coming right into the uh, 1.30 time frame. Now, I'm not the only one that looks at these patterns. I'm not the only one that knows that if a .786 Gartley pattern fails, it'll turn into a butterfly. Boy, you talk about the pile-on effect out here. Everybody piled in as soon as that thing broke. And that was at uh, 2 o'clock and at 2.30 when you had natural gas just absolutely shooed up to the moon, making a high of $5.48. Now what we're seeing here is a nice orderly uh, pullback in the uh, market, uh, maybe setting up a next uh, Gartley pattern out here. Let's go take a look at this off of just this swing point here from the, uh, this is again, it's a 30 minute chart, so it's an intraday chart that one would be looking at and or potentially trading. That's coming off of the low at 496, all the way up to that high that was uh, put in here at 2.30 in the afternoon. What we can see is we are now down at the .618 Gartley, well, we're at the .618 retracement of that move is what I should say. No bullish candle signal out here at the .618. That does not mean that this is a uh, buy. It just means it's made the .618 retracement. If it fails here, five dollars and seven cents is its uh, next stop. Let's try to draw the uh, pattern in here. Let's see. This will automatically go ahead and uh, no, won't uh, won't really find an A to B equals C D on the uh, way down. But here is that uh, here is that uh, pattern. Now, well, I guess I should step back one 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 area here. If we take a look at the Gartley cell pattern here that had failed. As I say, it will typically turn into a butterfly pattern. Now, I don't know whether it's 1.272, 1.618, wherever it's going to uh, move to out here. In this case here, it blasted through the 1.272 level, which was $5.35. It never did make it all the way up to the 553 area. If I put the oversold, however, let me just put that uh, relative strength 14 period indicator out here. Now, folks, please. I use indicators. Basil uses indicators or what have you. Remember that many of these indicators measure the same thing just with some different math out there, and really it's all about the math. And so become an expert at one of them if you're looking for momentum. Either use relative strength or use the, uh, or use the uh, stochastics out there because it, they have an 85% correlation. So if you put them both on your chart, number one, you're taking up a lot of space. That's unnecessary. Number two... Now you're trying to become an expert of two things. Use the one that works for you out here. In this case here, it always works better for me utilizing the RSI. Just simply, as a, it just it's naturally appealed to me. And in this case, as the market was moving up on that 30-minute chart, it was getting into that extreme over. Uh, bought uh, condition. In fact, all you had to really do is go back to the left-hand side of the chart to see what happened the last time that price got up into that level and price got up into that level. In fact, what it did was it made a price relative strength divergent pattern because it pulled back just slightly for two bars for an hour before it went up, made a higher high, did it with less relative strength, and that's where we saw a nice little uh, pullback out here. In this case, we don't have that same pattern. So this case here, the pattern pullback is a little bit more orderly, and now what you're waiting for is you're waiting for some type of bullish reversal signal. That's if you were looking to get in on a, a trade or if you were trying to manage uh, your long trades out here, uh, you know, what it is that you're looking for. So that I think that covers natural gas, PDG, pretty darn good out here. In any event, let's go take a look at... Uh, uh, bonds right now, bonds trading at 133.03 out here. Nice big uh, wide-ranging bar here uh, yesterday. 
uh, just having an inside day, so not really providing us with a, a ton of information out here. Uh, the swing point is uh, that it tested was from October 30th uh, yesterday out there. It uh, looks like it. Uh, I, I don't have the volume read on this, so I can't tell you if it came in with uh, it came in light or came in heavy. That much I can't uh, tell you just uh, just yet. Let's go back over, and then we'll take a look at uh, first. Let's go back over to those thirty minute charts. We had identified some resistance areas. Let's go see how things are being handled in those resistance uh, zones out here. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, Dow first. You can see the Dow moving up into that resistance zone and continuing to show its uh, weakness out here. Now, never actually hit the uh, top of that uh, descending uh, price channel out here, but it certainly has sold off a uh, bit uh, since we have come on the air. This is the Dow futures that we're looking at. The Dow itself is up uh, 66 points right now. Let's take, here's the ES Mini. So the ES Mini hits a dead smack solid. you got to love this. So here's the ES Mini. Gets up, gets up to a high of 1782 out here, and has uh, just started to pull back into the towards the overbought condition, but not uh, you know in an extreme area, but towards. So this is going to be important for us to be paying attention to here, whether or not uh, the ES mini, the S and P, can actually break through this trend. At this stage here, it's doing what it naturally should do, which is to, in essence, reject that area and begin to uh, pull back. And we'll see. So what did I do with my trade? I went ahead and adjusted my uh, stop. I'm right at 1780. Uh, underneath the uh, low of the uh, bar here at 9.30, which was 1780.25. If I get taken out, I get taken out, and it'll be for a profit, no problem out here. So I'll just let the market do its thing. So that is on the ES Mini trade out here. If we take a look at, uh, and where did I go along? It was at 1773.50 out there. If we take a look at the uh, NASDAQ futures here, NASDAQ futures not really backing off that much. Of course, you've got Google up 34 bucks. Uh, Lexian Pharmaceuticals, I think, also in the uh, NASDAQ, so that's up $30. And even Apple is up $4 and change. So the uh, NASDAQ future is going to be all about the NASDAQ. Can they pull these markets higher out here? Hitting that uh, 3513 level, so far 35 14 is what it actually hit. 35.13 was the .786 retracement. No back off here just yet, even though it's in that uh, little overbought uh, uh, condition uh, out here. So it's going to be up to the uh, NASDAQ to really pull these uh, markets higher out here. Now let's go take a look at some stocks here that are popping and uh, dropping. And they are all over the place. Let's take a look here at ADT Corp. ADT down with volume this morning, gapping down with volume. Trading out right now with that uh, 3245. Let's go see what it's trading into. It's trading into, it came back to a breakout area. Came back to a breakout area. Unfortunately, with volume, it uh, would have been nice for it to have come back to a breakout area on light volume. That breakout area that we're looking at, I'm going to use the bottom of the uh, session, which is July 1st, 1997. How can that be? No. Man, let me refresh this screen here. That can that cannot possibly be. Uh, well, that's weird. Uh, that's really weird. Uh, and what I mean weird is I can't get my uh, system to do it. There we go. No, that's not what it was supposed to do. Hmm. Hmm. <clears throat> Something to think about. <laughs> the uh, the actual date on this says there we go. It says October first. No, July first, nineteen ninety seven. Well, I'm not going to give you a read on the ADT Corp because this is too whacked out. And the actual bar, if you look at the uh, date. On the left-hand side, it's July 1st, 1997. So that data there, that's no good. I'll try to figure out that at a later time. Let's take a look at uh, Citrix System. CTXS is the uh, ticker symbol. Let's go see what it is uh, doing here. To the uh, downside, gapping down this morning. This has some volume behind its move to the downside. This thing is, uh, this is its, what, uh, second, uh, third gap, fourth gap. This thing has a number of gaps to the uh, downside. Uh, this is taking now. Uh, it's coming back to a. Uh, let's put this on a weekly chart out here. Let's take a look at a, a time frame out here. Let's take a look at the weekly. See what it is doing. So it's trying to get all the way back into the uh, swing trading in the weekly swing point here from August nineteenth, two thousand eleven. The low of which is fifty twenty one. You would expect that area to be tagged. That had on a weekly basis twenty three million uh, shares out here. Uh, so far through yesterday, about twelve and a half million shares has not hit that level. If it does not hold, it'll come back. You've got it's you've got some pretty decent support here 
And there was an original breakout that took place back in 2010. We put that line across the uh, screen out here. That's what it is uh, really traveling into, and that's at about $47.16 out here. So that is where Citrix uh, Systems is likely headed to. I'd say the 47.16-ish range. Let's see, what else do we have moving out here? You've got Under Armour. Under Armour up. Let's go take a look at the volume behind the uh, move here this morning. Give me a moment here. This thing is up. Uh, let's go take a look also at a weekly chart. It's trading right now 100.53 and has some nice volume behind the move already. 1.5 million shares out here taking out a, uh, let's take, this is a, a daily chart. Let's go take a look at a weekly chart for this equity, see where it is headed to. Boy, that talk about a wide-ranging bar on a weekly basis. So this looks like it's uh, probably taking out a, a B point with volume. Yeah, it is. Let me refresh my screen just to make sure that I've got what I've got out here. And that is the B point has got only 5.7 million shares. Boy, this is a confirmed A to B equals CD up on a weekly chart inside of Under Armour. And where does that uh, send it to? You can see that it's hit the one-to-one -one level. But uh, take a look at this uh, move here. This is a strong move on the C to D leg on the weekly chart. This says that we ought to see Under Armour make its way up to about the 114.15-ish level as its next stop out there. So that's on Under Armour. Nice move here this morning. Let's take a look at uh, Facebook. Let's go see what Facebook is uh, doing. Facebook on a, a daily chart taking out, well, it's all-time highs for sure. And let's see what it's doing on a, a daily basis. You had volume of uh, 61 million shares. That was on January 22nd versus today. You're already up with 46 million shares. So there's another A to B Let's take a look at the A to B well, potential out here. Let's look at the uh, shorter term one as we speak right now. That would be coming off of the uh, low out here on November 26th. 43.55 would be your A point. Your B point is going to be the swing here from January 22nd. Uh, we take a uh, we take a movement down into the uh, trading session on the daily uh, basis, January 27th. 54.73. One to one, A to B equals CD. That's not what it'll do. Uh, one to one says 67.59, but more likely, I would have to say the target would be about 71.91 out there. That would be inside of uh, Facebook. So nice move out here with some uh, good volume behind the uh, move. Let's go take a look at Alexian Pharmaceuticals, A L X N. Let's go see what it is doing. Now, this is a weekly chart that we have on our screen. This here. Uh, taking out a uh, bearish engulfing candle from last week out here. That was the last time the bears showed up. Of course, no confirmation with this move up here. Alexian Pharmaceuticals off to the uh, moon. Also looks like a uh, confirmed A to B equals CD up. We'll be right back, folks. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of direction funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the direction funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term 
long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing, next on TFNN. Uh, 80 points right now. S and P is up uh, 13. That's right now at 1787. Uh, so we got uh, green arrows across the board, with the exception of uh, Goldilocks and uh, silver. Light sweet crude up a buck right now. Uh, back on the uh, silver, we're going to go check in on uh, silver and uh, gold here. Now, on the daily chart, with inside of the uh, consolidation zone, so if you're watching us on Tiger TV, you see a, a red box that is uh, drawn across my, the bottom of my screen out here, and that red box is really the consolidation pattern. That's at $2.30-ish. Uh, range you can see so far uh, go, uh, silver has rejected the low of that uh, level now of course we knew that looking at the 30 minute charts for both gold and silver they had moved into that extreme oversold condition so we know that that has to be worked off so we still have to really be very cognizant and pay attention because that's all that's really happening it's like a rubber band you know if you were to try to stretch a rubber band and that's how these uh, indicators really work if you were, took a rubber band in your hand and you just kept stretching and stretching and stretching out there eventually it would snap and the markets really, they snap or they snap back or what have you. So you want to really be paying attention uh, to those uh, indicators. Now, what was also occurring with inside this consolidation box, it did set up a, a Gartley buy pattern. And it did this uh, two trading sessions ago on January 28th when it made a .618 Gartley buy pattern. Now, it was never confirmed. Yesterday had the opportunity to uh, get confirmed. And he did actually form a uh, what's called a, a bull sash. It's really a combination of bull sash, bullish and golfing candle out here. But, uh, you know, as a second opinion uh, goes, it did not get that second opinion. So if we take a look at the uh, shorter uh, term, uh, what I mean by a second opinion is that the price needed to move higher out there to confirm that uh, candlestick. So back to the uh, short-term chart. On the 30-minute uh, uh, basis here, let's go ahead and zoom in a bit so we can see it. And see now it's very important here on the 30-minute chart because it did form a hammer candle as it was coming and uh, creating that uh, little, straight, you know, bouncing back off of that extreme oversold uh, uh, condition. That says now inside of silver, the level of 1898 is a very important 
level for it to uh, hold today. So, so far, just simply working itself off uh, sideways. Look, a bounce up to, uh, you would expect a bounce up maybe to about the 1939-ish uh, range out here because it would want to try to get back uh, maybe, well, it's not really a break of a, a de- you know, it's a descending trend line. So the mere fact that it moved lower actually has a whole lot less meaning than, than gold's chart. So that being said, let's go. But, however, on the daily chart, on the uh, intraday chart, the 30-minute chart, that hammer candle is extremely important out here. Again, that price is nineteen eighteen ninety eight out here. If we take a look at uh, gold, that's the more important uh, metal to uh, monitor right now because it did break through its little rising price channel out here. And as you can see, during the 30-minute uh, session that we're in here right now at uh, 10 a.m., it tried to get up into that level. I mean, it hit a dead smack on. I don't know how well you can see the uh, wick here, but really just hit that uh, area, that level. Right now, it's trying to form a little bullish engulfing uh, candle. Should really have no problem doing that here unless it just sells off over the next three minutes. But, you know, the market's going to do what the market's going to do. What you want to see if you are a a bull inside of the uh, metals inside gold, you want to see it get back inside that uh, channel line, which is right around the 1245-ish range out here. So, as far as uh, other things to look at, we've got a pretty decent uh, market breadth out here, about 1,700 net advancing issues inside of the uh, New York uh, Stock Exchange. If we take a look at the uh, VIX index, that is uh, pulling back down about 79 cents here this morning. Let's go see where that is at in comparison to the uh, 50-day exponential moving average. So the VIX index is just suggesting that what we've got going on here right now is just a counter-trend rally, but it could be a, a doozy out there. So look, if you're short the market, just make sure you have your stops in place or adjust your stops out there. Same thing if you're long. If you do that, you can't go wrong out here, just like being here with us at TFNN. So thanks so much for joining us on a terrific uh, Thursday out here. If you're off to start your day, have a great day. I look forward to seeing you in the morning. Otherwise, I'll see you in about eight minutes. Take care, folks. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFNN.com. Eastern legend tells of a fair maiden who was offered a rare gift by the king of the land, a bag of pearls. The king promised that she could keep the largest, most perfect pearl she could find with these three conditions. One, choose only one pearl. Two, remove one pearl at a time, accept or reject it. And three, if rejected, it would be lost forever. She began by looking at the pearls passing on many special treasures. She delved deeper into the bag and soon the pearls were replaced with pebbles. Sadly, she went home empty-handed. Folks, replace pearls with time because we cannot go back even two seconds. We live in the eternal moment of now. So when now are you going to take advantage of my offer to you, a subscription to my daily investment newsletter service, Mastering Probability, where you can experience the most incredible pearls for trading and investing, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator and Strategy. The offer? It gets better. A 30-day money-back guarantee. Don't go home empty-handed. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. You're watching Tiger TV.